Got my main man Juan here today. We are going to be cleaning out the sandbox this morning to get it ready for who? Stanley Genetic out of Dirt Monkey University. So he's gonna come in here and film with us. We're gonna teach him how to do the fountainscape on a large aqua basin, the little pondless waterfall, which is the backyard landscape and waterfall kit. The day after that, we're gonna do an 11 by 16 foot pond. I don't think he thinks we can do this in a day with four guys. We're gonna show him. Mm hmm. We are rocking and rolling. We just have to get all these four reservoirs out of here. See the guys feverishly working. Now we're doing this before we head out and hit the field. All hands on deck. We're getting it done. Ed? What's up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So we've got Stanley from Dirt Monkey U in with us. Guys, glad to be here. And then we've got Tim, who's his guy. So he's gonna be working alongside Ed and myself. Brian and Stanley are gonna watch this process. Stanley's also documenting it for his channel. Where can they find you? Dirt Monkey. Awesome. So Brian is backing up the truck. The landscape and waterfall kits can all fit into the back of a pickup. Anybody, it doesn't make a difference what level of business you're in. It doesn't matter what level of project you're going to tackle. You've got to walk before you can run. When you start out with little projects like this, like a fountain, like a pondless waterfall, that's going to give you the confidence to go up to a little bit bigger project. Having this one system down where it's that A, B, C, D, E, and F, everybody's on the same page, is going to speed that up. And the owners of the company are going to have more money. They're going to give better service to their customer so everybody wins in this situation the reason I brought Tim in is very technical he's very question oriented but he's also never seen any of this process before so I want to see it through a fresh set of eyes and then I'm documenting the pondless waterfall, A, B, C, D, E, and F. What are the steps? What's the cost of material? How long does it actually take? We're gonna do a fountain next. Tomorrow, we're gonna get into a bigger project, so we got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> So super awesome. Um, one, I don't have to do a whole lot of work today. I've been chosen as the narrator. It's impossible not to get my hands a little dirty. Things are flying along, and that's what's so cool about putting in these backyard kits. They go so quick. You can see Chris already getting the plumbing ready. The reservoir, the aqua basin has been put in the ground. We've got a small piece of fabric we put over the top just to keep sand from getting down in there. As soon as the plumbing's done, they're gonna start putting rocks on this thing. These are the boulders they get to choose from. No more, no less. You can see we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 total rocks, three, four, five buckets of gravel, and a bucket of smaller little cobbles just for filler. All of these rocks are gonna create a one-of-a-kind custom creation sitting right over there. I love, love, love doing these small little pondless waterfalls. You can be endlessly creative with a short amount of stone. It doesn't take us all day to do it. Two guys will finish something like this in three to four hours. Everything fits in the back of a pickup truck. It's just fun, right? <laughs> It makes a huge impression in a very, very small space. These guys are flying through. You can see the reservoirs in. Pump is actually already hooked up inside of this area here. Main reason we do that is so we can actually get this plumbing done and get everything backfilled in this area. So the next step is to take that piece of liner, lay it out, and then they're gonna start dropping rock in after rock. Kind of set our rock in here first and then we could start backfilling accordingly but um we're going to go probably from this point we'll probably backfill right around in here so that's going to give us a six six seven inch waterfall but it's going off of the stone we don't want to stack a bunch of boulders on top of each other we want to set this and then kind of layer ourselves back that allows for a little bit more interaction for the water to splash down to create little pockets and pools which is going to really expand the overall size of it so from a consumer standpoint, that's going to give them a bigger stream effect. It's great mm -hmm. for the birds and everything. Also allows for a little bit more landscaping, which is going to give us a better overall look from a design uh, standpoint. A lot of guys get <laughs> caught up in the artistic side of things. One of the things that, that you taught me was you start with one type of stone 
and you just get really, really comfortable. You practice, that kind of stuff. For the first, I think, 10 years, Ed and I worked together, all we used was granite. So we really get to understand the properties of the stone, which is really important, uh -huh. right? How the water's gonna roll over it, interact with it. You understand how to estimate it. Also, if there's leftover stone, and tomorrow we're building another project out of granite, where does the leftover stone go? To tomorrow's project, right? You follow, that's yeah. good yeah. for you. You agree, right, Ed? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say is so neat about this that Stanley's here, brought his new guy, Tim? Yep. Think of our education system out there. You go through kindergarten, learn these basic things. If you don't have that uh, good solid foundation of understanding those basics, you can't build on top of it. You're building on a weak foundation. So now all of a sudden, when you get to a bigger project, you're not efficient. Then that stuff really can come back and destroy you. Something like this, you're off a couple hours, it's not gonna break you. So that solid foundation in the beginning is critical. You master that. Do 15, do 20 of these. Moment of truth. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, One more you. time. <laughs> How long does it take to build, Ed? Two hours, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Watch this, Greg. I'm watching. Bam, white. Check this. Oh, yeah, disco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the party. <laughs> We're trying to keep going here and Stanley and the pond guy are nowhere to be found. So I think I have a sneaking suspicion I know where they're at. Guess where I am? Yep, here inside the Aquascape Zootopia. Yeah, see, <laughs> I knew it. I knew where you guys were. I played with my turtle. Ah, that is gorgeous. Isn't that a cool animal? God. They live forever. This is 75 years old, 80 pound snapping turtle. Get in there, give you <laughs> no thanks. 50 bucks. Holy cow. Wolfram. Amazon, the Mata Mata turtle. Look at that thing. Look at how little the eyes are. You know, and, and a piece of bark. Where are they indigenous out of? Amazon. So fun. It's my little zoo area. We are ready to start up the second project of the day. We have our aqua basin coming in. It's going to be located right there. That's the center point. We're going to mark that area out. We're going to excavate it down. And now we're going to place one of the brand new stack slate spheres on top of that. Digging that down uh, about four inches deeper than that. So it's going to be a little bit recessed. Set the sphere in place. We're going to come in with some decorative rock and gravel to finish all that up. All right, stay tuned as we continue to do this really cool little project. even an hour what do you think Chris <laughs> just for reference the actual aqua basin is right about here what we're talking about is this extra piece of liner now what that is doing this is all graded just slightly a couple inch difference from here to here and the reason we did that is any of the splash that's coming off you can see kind of the damp gravel over here it's going to pick up that water it's going to bring it back in so that allows us to capture more of that splash it also gives it a little bit better look so instead of just having that four foot by four foot square now we have more irregularity. Did some little plantings around it. We have our pump accessible on that side. This took us 45 minutes. We're cleaning up right now. We didn't film it because it went too quick. <laughs> <laughs> Day two, yesterday, stack slate sphere, poundless waterfall today, 11 by 16 foot pond. The very first thing we have to do is lay this thing out. So if we're designing a pond for a homeowner, we always want to bring it right up close to the deck or right up close to the patio. The nice thing about doing these kits is we have a piece of liner to work with. We have that palette. So now we can play around with different shapes.
What's the nice thing about having different size pond kits? Well, the nice thing about it is the flexibility. Everything that you need for the project comes in one box. So all your fittings, your silicone, your waterfall foam, your piping, your pump, the uh, biological filter, the pre-filter, everything you need minus the rock and gravel is inside this box. So when you're doing a job, you don't have to second guess anything. You know all the components are gonna be there. Next step after laying out the pond is placing the components, right? Yeah, so let's drop this filter. One way to look at it is the filter, more importantly, it's also the waterfall. Yep. The biggest mistake people make, they set it way too high. And you'll be so impressed with how creative we can get with the waterfall at an 18, 17 inch high waterfall. We always call it that two foot, three foot rule. Mm -hmm. Whatever height the pool is, we want the dirt to come out flat, two to three feet, and then slowly taper. So once I drop this down, it'll make it even easier to do that. So as you can see, we are making progress. We have been, how many, how long have we been on this now? Two and a half hours. Biofalls is set. Plumbing is run, skimmers in place, liners in place, fabrics in place, starting to do all of our stone. Chris is starting right at a key area in front of the skimmer. He's gonna work his way off of that. The reason he's doing that is because the skimmer requires some larger boulders next to it. So we wanna set those first and then connect everything off of those. Working our way up towards the waterfall to finish everything up. We'll start washing it down, filling it with water, and we will be set. We put a water meter on the other end of this hose and that allows us to know exactly how many gallons are in this pond. That's important just so the consumer, when they want to add water treatments, they know how to calculate how much water treatments they should put in per gallons in their pond. You, you're doing a great job. Well, this isn't the first time I've done this. This takes practice, Chris. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific method that you want to share with them? <laughs> oh, was that my bad? That's on me. Don't worry, he'll get this. Think of it as an IV drip for your pond. It automatically adds the necessary water treatments that you need to keep this pond clean. Ed, the scientist, what is it adding It's in? adding in a mixture of beneficial microorganisms and bacteria that are gonna colonize the entire pond. They're gonna break down the nitrogenous waste that's generated by the fish, as well as the decomposition processes that are gonna happen inside from all the organic compounds, leaves, lawn clippings, and things like that. process and the key about this if I could train Ed and Ed could train Brian and Brian could train Chris then I could do what I should do as an owner which is to work on the business and not in the business. Tim you did this for the first time could you see how this is a replicatable process? Yep. I mean you do three to five times you'll have this process done. Thanks for watching. I hope this video inspired you to dive deeper into this very easy process of building ponds and water features and offering it as just another avenue to, to successfully service your customers. If you have any comments, please post them below. If not, like, subscribe, and please, please, please share this video. And I can't wait to see you again next time. Peace.